MC Ten. Light. Let's go MC Light. Lyrics, 13. Gave her a 13. Uh, voice, 10. Yep. Delivery, 8. I gave her a 9, but I'm cool with the 8 because we're being tougher. Storytelling, I went 9, but I'm cool with that being an 8. I went 8 because, okay. once again, the storytelling is there, but it's not reaching 5 to 10. Okay. Catalog of album 12. I went 11. I'm, I'm cool with that. I just her yeah, are, her We got to be tougher. Her songs are great. Her albums are not, and her career on her albums wasn't as long as people think. Collaboration, seven? I gave her a nine. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. Why? Because she, she didn't collab often, but she often stole the show when she did. And she did it in a male-dominated format, the most male-dominated format, whether she wrote it or not. Self-destruction comes to mind. I mean, that was the first one I was going to say. Funky Fresh, just to impress, ready to party. But I, but, but she maybe didn't write it, so can we go eight maybe on collab? I'm cool with eight. Yeah. Uh, Lyrics. I'm not lyrics. Longevity of records. I went eight. So did I. Uh, longevity of career, I went eight. I went eight on that, but part of me is thinking it might be a seven because I think part of us is nostalgic because she's who we grew up on. Well, she did have that rough neck phase and all that stuff. Right, but that's kind of where it ended. It's it like ended. She, did rough, she did the rough. Very neck Big thing. Daddy Kane ish. Very Kane ish. So it's like she did the rough neck thing. That's what ninety three. Yeah. And then she does the cold rock a party and keep on with the escape and Missy thing. And yeah. then like after that, it's done though. Cold Isn't rock it? a party wasn't the best um, image of her. Can I tell you something? What's that? I love the rock apart. I love that record. No, no, but that record's more about Missy than her. I don't care. She needed that. She I needed like that more record. stuff like that in her catalog. That helps with her versatility. Some say I'm shady. That's me. I love that record. Or me, like the MC. You see, I'm more to you, baby, than a mechanism. She started getting personal. Light was never personal. She always acted like a dude because of the era that she got, grew up in. And so it was cool to see her let her guard down and be more feminine or even talk in a more feminine way. No, that was cool for me. Okay. I'm cool with the whole rock a party. So we're going Keep eight on. with longevity? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep on. Keep it on is one of the best rap singles ever released by a female. That's the thing cool. with escape? Yeah. Let, yeah. No, that's the Liberian she, girl sample. Liberian girl sample? No, she killed that. B boy, where the fuck you been? I've been waiting on your ass since a quarter past. Yeah. No, she. So we she, going she eight with longevity of career? You said eight? Because we're talking about 88 to, well. I, 95. Yeah. Well, that's seven. seven. That's seven. Yeah, Let's yeah, go seven. seven for each year. Yeah. All right. Songwriting skills. I go eight. I gave her a nine because of the, but then I think about she had ghostwriters, so I'm cool with eight. Yeah, questionable. You know what I thought about about with longevity of career? Rap is so short and so brief that if you are a legend in in your first ten years, and then in your next ten years you're still a legend, that would be a ten. Don't you think? Like if you have a ten year career and then ten years after your ten year career you're still a legend, that would be a ten. For, 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 you know what I'm saying? Career longevity. You get what I'm saying? Like, if you look at LL from 85 to 95, he had a full legendary career from 85 to 95, from radio to Mr. Smith. But then if you look at the next 10 years, it's like, no, still an icon. That's what a 10 on, like, longevity of career looks like. That's facts. Le All right, legacy, 10. Yeah, she's the life. Live performance, I went eight. And a lot of that was going off of that in Living Color performance because I ain't never really seen her perform, like, you know, live, live. But she was always a dope performer when I saw her on television doing it. That That's something, like, um, I'd like to let the OGs kind of weigh in on, and that's where other people's comments and the people matter. Like, uh, Mike, you're uh, 37 going on 38, correct? Oh, no, no, I'm 39 going on 40. I'll be 40. Um, okay, Mike. yeah. Okay, Mike, you old as hell. <laughs> All right. But I'm about to say, I'm 40 going on 41. You're 39 going on 40. This is where, as far as the live performance thing, we need the G's who are like 43 to 50 to fill us in to help us with that. Like content, man. I went eight. So did I. Intangibles, I went 10. 
Why? I went eight on intangibles. Because she just had a presence, man. And, like, I think that anytime that she was a part of something, it validated it. She had that kind of like what Snoop Dogg had with Dog Pound and all that. Like, whenever light was around, whether it was... Right. If light jumped on something, it gave it credibility. Yeah. Like, that's strong. You're yeah. right. Because if light jumped on something, it's like, yeah, but light's on there. It's like, yeah. oh, word. That I Want to Be Down remix, all that. Like, I think her and Queen Latifah have that. No, you're right. How about this? I think they're the first females to really have that in particular. Yeah. Where like, no, but light on there, but no, Latifa on there. It's like, oh, I need to check it. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. yeah. Hook game. I put ten, but I, I don't think that's it. What made you say ten for hook? Game? I'm trying to think. What made me say hook uh, ten for hook game? I got her at seven, so that's why I was wondering because there's such a gap. Yeah, I think that's a little bit. That might have been a misprint on my end. Might have been tired, Mike. Yeah, might've I think that might have been, been it. Because yeah, I'm sitting here looking at the 10. I'm like, how did I even justify that? Okay. <laughs> Versatility, I gave her a 9. I gave her an 8. Okay. I don't think she started to show her versatility to the end, and she really didn't show it on a long term basis. And I felt like it was industry push. And this is what I mean. I didn't love Roughneck, even though Roughneck was really big, because I felt like she was pushed by the label to do Roughneck. But I felt like when she did Cold Rock a Party, and I felt like when she did Keep On, that was more natural to the grown woman that she was. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to the great Scarface right now. Face Mom. Lyrics, 14. Agreed. Voice, 10. Agreed. Delivery, 9. I went 10. I, could, he, I understand that. He's went through an assortment of flows and deliveries. But, Mike, if we're going to be more stringent, of all the top-notch delivery guys, no, his delivery is still a 10, Mike. I can't. Because he hits the mic too hard in a way that MCs can't. You no, get no, what I'm I, saying? No, I'm like, with you on that. He can vocally... He can vocal. Once again, to Ice Cube and Tupac, the depth in the base of his voice vocally and what it takes out of your breath on the mic. Yeah. The ability to do that and to punch for 16 bars or 24 bars or for yeah. two or three minutes nonstop, Mike. Even like, you know, he has that whole, him and Ghostface do a lot of similar things where it's like, he like, like that verse on this can't be life. It sounds like he's damn near crying on the mic. Not everybody can that, do that. So, 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 so so the verse on This Can't Be Life and, and Ghostface's verse on Impossible, same thing to me. Mm -hmm. Same thing to me. And it's funny that you're bringing up the Ghostface, Scarface thing. And you know how I, how about this? We both, how about this? I think Ghostface is probably your favorite rapper's rapper. Mm -hmm. And Scarface is my favorite rapper's rapper. And they do very and, similar things. They do very similar things, Mike, because what are they great at? They're great at making a whole album. They're great at storytelling. The way that they hit the mic is so unique, isn't it? Yeah. They do a lot of the same things well. And so, like, for me, even when we have these conversations, I've always thought this low-key. It's like, well, Ghostface is the East Coast Scarface. And Scarface They're is very the, similar. Down South. Right. Even down the catalog of albums, because when I line up their catalogs, I'm like, damn. It's almost identical how much quality material they consistently put out. And, you know, even though Face precedes him, Ghostface works a little more, and so it's caught up, and it's like the catalogs almost look the same. Jay Short says, can't name five bad Scarface songs. Yeah, it's hard to find those. Most consistent rapper who ever lived. Him and Ghostface. That's why I tell people, it's like, if you want to tell me that Nas and Jay are greater than them, it's about the peak of their greatness, because Scarface and Ghostface are more consistent their than Jay. Their consistency is crazy. I've been saying that for years now. Jay and Nas... They're heavyweights. They're the greatest, but they're not consistent the way Ghost and, Nas and Scarface are. Scarface has never made a bad rap album, in my opinion, Mike. You understand that? That's crazy. He's never made a rap album where I was like, man, put that shit away. That ain't no good. <laughs> Nas and Jay have made multiple albums like that where I was like, what is that? Put, put, put that shit up. Scarface what storytelling. That? Storytelling. 10. 15, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's off the scales. <laughs> He's the yeah. best storytelling MC, in my this, opinion. This, this is one of the few guys 
that is in argument is truly the greatest storyteller ever. It is a very short list. It is Biggie. It is Scarface. It is Nas. It is Ghostface. It is Slick Rick. It is maybe Ice Cube on a good day and Tupac in there. And that is the end of that list. And he is in that category. And he might be at the top of that category outside of Nas. And the only reason he's not ahead of Nas is just because Nas is a better lyricist because of shit like Rewind and I Gave You Power. I think he's a better storyteller than Nas, but that's just me. Right. And so when you say that, Mike, I don't disagree with you because if you take the lyrical miracle out of it. He makes you feel things that Nas doesn't when he's telling the story. Now, I think Nas is a more detailed storyteller, but I think that you feel the story more when it comes from Scarface and Ghostface for that. How about matter. this? How about this? You would probably rather read the book coming from Nas. You would probably rather watch the movie coming from Scarface. Does that I make feel sense? That. I feel that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So catalog so of my, albums. That's my one and two. That's my one and two on, on storytellers like objective. Catalog of albums fifteen. Yep. I Collaborations. I, I went nine. It was hard to rate because he's from that era where you don't work with a lot of people, but he transitioned and worked with people. But when he shows up, he shows out. But what I will tell you is that it is not 10 because 10 is big, 10 is not, 10 is J. Even if we went eight, I wouldn't be mad at that. But the ones that he's done, like Smile and, you know, Hand of the Dead Body and uh, Guess Who's Back, Beans and Brad, you know what I mean? Like. No, favor, favor for a favor with Nas. Yeah. Like, come on, let, 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 let's not go to the stuff people collaborated with him on. Mm-hmm. This is how I try. Let's look at this category. When I'm saying collaborations, I don't mean who collaborated with you on your shit. I mean who shit you jumped on and collaborated. I and got so you. that's what I mean when I'm saying he's a nine because it's like, oh, he got that favor for a favor with Nas. He got that guess who's back. He got that Mac and Brad. But that's head shit and not necessarily classic the way something like oh i don't know um nas on verbal intercourse or or biggie on can't you see or jay-z on um on the my best of me remix you know what yeah. i'm saying no it's i got you bad. there's levels to it there's levels to it so i would give him nine because next level damn okay um longevity of records i went nine I have, okay, so here's where we need to start. So this is about to be very, very close. Well, Mike, he made mine playing tricks on you. And he's the author of that. That's true. He also made Never Seen a Man Die, right? Yeah. Right. He also made Smile, right? Yeah. Is it but, enough? Hold on, hold on. So, so that's what I'm saying. So I said you need five to get in. So what other records? Because I know those records get played. I mean, I guess Guess Who's Back's not his. Well, that is his, actually. Um, my Block. My Block and Let Me Roll is what I thought of. Um, and Going Down. Please excuse my attitude. That still just gets played randomly. Yeah. And I, I don't think, think that's, that's strong actually, enough, you know, when we put it up against, you know, like you said, LL's the barometer for that. Right, in Hand of the Dead Body. Yeah. So that's what, six? What yeah. else does he have that gets played? Um, Mary Jane, did we say that? Ooh, Mary Jane, that's seven. Okay. So yeah, I think nine is accurate because I think he probably has about seven records that's still in rotation. But what I submit to you, Mike, Mary Jane, um, Never Seen a Man Die, Mom Playing Tricks on Me, also, if, if those are the seven records that still get played, those three records, Mike, I would borderline you 10 on that because those are three of the best rap records ever. Uh, yeah. but, I, but, but we'll be strict and say nine, but, but he's got seven records still running, in my opinion. So nine is cool. Longevity of career, I went 10. Yep, it's not even a question. Songwriting skills, I went 10. It's not a question. Legacy, I went 10. It's not a question. Live performance, I went nine. I really don't know much about his live. He plays live guitar and everything in his performances. Remember, like you did tell me that. Where did I put? I put his performance at an eight. Yeah, I went nine because he's one of the few MCs that can actually pull out an instrument. actual instrument you know, and play. No, playing an instrument matters. I'm Content, cool I went ten. That's not a question. Intangibles, I went eight. 
I went 10 on intangibles. There's something about face. There's something about his voice that matches what he does. It's eerie. You went eight? I went eight because I feel like those are so, the lack of intangibles are some of the reasons why he isn't revered. Ooh. Um, you know, undeniably by yeah. the masses. You might, you know what? You're making a strong point when you say that. I'm going to go that you If that, that were a 10, there would be no question. Be, no, no, no. How about this? If his intangibles were a 10, he'd be we DMX. Talk about the way we talk about Pac, <laughs> Big, and Nas, and Jay. You're yeah. right. Because, because I want you to understand this. This is it like after what? It goes like this on my list. It goes Nas. Rakim, Pop, Big, Jay, and my next two guys in the face, and that's Scarface and Ghostface. You know, so that's how high I have him. Yeah, and you're he's right. High. And he doesn't have the intangibles that the other five ahead of him had. Yeah. And so you're right about the eight. Man, I can't wait to uh, rate Ghostface on that. Uh, hook game, I went eight. So did I. Versatility, I went eight. So did I. And I think those are. I think that's strong, and because he does dope hooks, but they're not super memorable. And I would borderline want to take him to seven for versatility. Okay. If we're being stricter, because I feel like versatility wise, if he's an eight, then that means. How about this? He's more versatile than Jada Kiss, right? I don't know, man. Jada's able to get on a lot of different stuff. Okay, so when I'm saying he's more versatile, it's like, okay, can Jada Kiss write Never Seen a Man Die and going down on the same house? No, 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 you're right. You're right. He's not as versatile as Scarface. Scarface I'm looking at versatility in a different way. But this is what I'm saying. It's like, how about this? And here's where I look at versatility. At your best and your brightest, what did you do? See, at Face's best and his brightest, he can literally make something like Never Seen a Man Die and Going Down and put them song by song on his seminal rap album and it works and makes sense. That is a mark of versatility. Jada right. Kiss has nothing like that, so it's not the same level to me. You're right. Well, so we're on the so, Jada Kiss right now and you're going to make me change my versatility score for that. That's Jada. what I'm going to say because I have been both at an 8, but when I thought about it, it's like, no. If Jada Kiss is an 8, Scarface is a 9, I don't think Scarface is a 9. I think Jada Kiss is a 7 for versatility. Mm. That's hard to say he's a seven, though. Well, I mean, really, when you look at all the shit that he smashed, that's hit records, it's all guest appearances. He really hasn't shown his okay. versatility. Of and see, I'm giving see. him versatility points on all of his guest appearance stuff. Right. And You're I thinking think about that, from the block and all about the Benjamins and all that. That's yeah, not his shit. and I'm thinking about, I mean, like, even the, the Usher record, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, no, and he deserves credit for all that, but all I'm but saying is... That's more collaboration that, stuff. Right. That's, that goes to who you are as a collaborative artist. Starface yeah. is showing his versatility on a gangsta ass rap album. That's like the, hardest, the hardest rap album ever. It's like he switched it up and made a love song, and you didn't even care or miss it and kept the album going. That's versatile as fuck. Kiss All right, never let's did get that. the Jada Kiss now because uh, yep. we're like three hours in. <laughs> right. This is going to be a mother to cut up. All right. So we got uh, Jada Kiss here. Lyrics. 14. I gave him a 15. What say you? I think that I don't think he's lyrically where Rakim, Nas, Lupe Fiasco, and you know, people of that level, Black Thought, I think he might be one step down. I don't think they're the exact same. Okay, so when you're saying that, you consider Jay Z and KRS One to be better lyricists than Jada Kiss? I definitely consider Jay Z to be a better lyricist than Jada Kiss. Jada Kiss doesn't it. have a "Who wanna bet us that we don't touch leather, stack cheddars forever, live treacherous, all the etc." Jada Kiss doesn't have a forty-four fours. Hmm. He doesn't lyrically. He doesn't. No, 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 no. But all jokes aside about what you just said, I really need to pause and think. About that. Where do we rank Pusha T as a lyricist? I want to say he was about 14. I don't have that chart up. No, I'm, I got the whole chart up on one because I just keep extending mine. Okay. So, yeah, we, got got one at a, so we, we got Conway and Pusha T at a 14. 
In common at a 14. Yeah, okay. Jadakiss is there. Right. Voice, no. I gave him a 10. Okay, okay. So, so understand this when I'm saying this. So you think, and this is what I mean about how we're going to have to start auditing stuff live. If you got Jada Kiss at a 14 lyrically, I got most deaf and Andre there too because they don't belong a stratosphere ahead of him because they don't have the work that speaks to them. I'm fine they, with that. I'm right. fine with that. If that's if that's right. the justification for it, I'm definitely fine with that. All right. Hold on, hold on. All jokes aside, do most deaf and Andre have more fire ass, light your ass up verses than Kiss? They don't. They're not 15s. Uh, I don't know. I think right. they're about it the same. If we, you know, equate everything, right, right, Kiss right. has taught saying. them over time. But right. if we so, talk about in the era that they existed, uh, that's mostly Andre and most. Yes, they were ahead of Jada, but Jada has caught them over time. No, no, no. See, here's what I'm about to submit to you: is is that in 1997, in 1998, most Def and Andre were respected as lyricists, but everybody thought Jada Kiss had next. No, no, Not that's true. Def and Andre, and yeah. that's because lyrically, he's stronger than them, in my opinion. He just hasn't proven it on a solo on album. A solo. The way, that's the way, hurting a lot of his scores. Right. The way the way most proved it on Black and Both Sides, and the way Andre proved it on four Outcast albums, but the, the but the right there. Yeah. If you got yeah. it. He's right there. Okay. So I'm cool with the 14 if that's if that's where we're at. But also this goes to my whole point when I said Jay's the last 15 for lyricists. Truist says, does Kiss have a sorry or life of the party? We're not going to get into this Andre 3000 stuff. Um, listen, I think if Andre 3000 had more material as an individual, then yes, there'd be no question he'd be a 15. But oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. And, and to that note, too, while we're here and while we're thinking of, oh, we already took Kendrick down to 14. Okay. Yeah. So, so right now, let's be clear. Lyrically, Rock M, KRS, Nas, J, Cool G Rap. Those are, and Lauren Hill, those are our 15s. And I'm okay with that. Now, are we keeping Lauren at 15? With all things considered. Just based on what you just said about most Def and Andre. Actually, Mike, if we're being fair and we're being tough. Yeah, we got to take her down, too. She got to go to 14, too. Yeah. And so, and so what I'm going to also submit to you is, is that, and, and this is what I'm predicting, even though I'm not certain of it. Oh, the only other person that's getting a 15 that's about to roll through here, if we're really tightening it up, that I'm pretty certain is getting a 15, is Black Thought and the Jism. Uh Everybody else, everybody else about to catch that work. Ghostface. All right, let's go Ghost to the next guy. Fifteen as a lyricist. If <laughs> Lauren Hill isn't, if Ice Cube isn't, if voice, Prodigy. voice, I got ten. Voice is a ten. Delivery, I got ten. Delivery is an eight because it doesn't change up enough. But I'm, he has the weird delivery. The only delivery I can say. It works on everything. It works on everything. It works it's on everything. fucking How does phenomenal. He do that? It's phenomenal. So I never mean? heard nothing How does like his delivery it. work on everything. His delivery works on everything. It's always We're going fascinating. Nine. We're going nine, but it's not fair because other guys have switched it up so much to get these. He nines never in has game. to like, switch it up. He could get on a oh. premiere track. He Look could get that. on a little John track. It is the same well, shit. That's exactly what I was thinking about. If you listen <laughs> to him on Recognize and then go listen to him on Grand Finale on Lil Jon stuff. It's he the can same get on Never Scared. Use the same delivery and it works every time. Well, hold, hold on. The popping bottles with Birdman and Wayne start with straight shots. Him and Pac are the only there. guys that could do that shit. Him, huh? and Pac, him and Tupac are the only guys that could do that shit. Also, let's so, so let me tell you something right quick. You want to know why? The voice is so special. We'll go nine. Even though we that was nine. the driving factor behind me giving it a ten. No, 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 no. We can't go nine because listen to the tens on delivery because he's not with these people. He's not he, delivery wise. He's not where Lauren is, or Scarface, or Ti, or Ice Cube, or Tupac, or. 
or LL. We can go DMX. nine though, right? Or DMX. No, no, we can go nine. I'm just okay. naming the tens on delivery. Busta Rhymes. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Most deaf. Andre. Is he in that category? Big pun. Is he in that category? No, nah, nah, I would too. Lil Wayne, Kendrick. Yeah. Method. Yeah, deliver. Yeah, that wouldn't be fair. Nay? Yeah, he's not that good. Yeah. Yeah, he's not there. Storytelling, I went seven. So did I. Not enough stories, but feel me and still feel me. More. Give me more. By Cata- your side. Catalog of albums. I went 12. I was being generous. I was being generous too. You went 12? I went 12, and that's pushing it. That is pushing it. Matter of fact, that's not- factoring in the recent stuff too. Right. Because the locks just dropped the dope the album. Lock. He that's dropped the dope in, album. Lock albums too. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's factoring in the last locks album to get to twelve. Yeah, uh, collaborations. I went ten. I did too. Hold on, Mike. Let me say this: if he doesn't drop Ignatius and they don't drop their album, yeah. this is an eleven. I factored that in. Yeah, Ignatius in the last locks album, living off experience, factored in. That's an eleven. Collaborations is a ten. Is an collaborations is a ten. Longevity of records. I went seven, and I could no. be wrong with that. I went eight because okay, I'm fine with that because he's been a part of so many big records. It's gonna. I, live I right just with. thought about that one. Yeah, because cool. I was factoring in his solo stuff with that seven. Right. But yeah, we'll always love Big Papa. All about the Benjamins. All about the Benjamins. Jenny from the respect. block is theirs. Yeah. No, Jenny from the block. Yeah. Money, power, respect. Right. Yeah. He's been part of a lot of shit. Yeah. Let's see longevity of career ten. Yep. Songwriting skills. I went eight. So did I. Legacy. Eight. Actually, Mike, Mike, can we stop for a second? Uh-huh. What are his songwriting skills really like? Like we know he's great at writing verses, but I don't know if he's even an eight for songwriting skills. It might I, be a seven. I was thinking about why. We could drop that to seven. Yeah, that's a seven. We could drop that. The problem seven. with making a classic album is the songwriting. It's true. Yeah. Um Legacy, I went eight. I went nine. Niggas love kiss. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Like, how about this? I want people to understand this. And people up top are going to know what I'm talking about. He is borderline revered the way Big J and Nas is revered up top. He is the people's it's champ. Borderline. He's it's borderline. the people's champ. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's Live borderline. performance. Live performance, nine. And I, I did 10. that because of the verses. I went 10 because of the verses. It's like they was already on nine and then he went on 10. I told you, Mike, the who shot you moment, that's one of rap's best moments in the last 10 years. Mm. Because I told you, that was the reminder that it's like, this is hip hop. This is rap. Can you rap? Yeah. Can you rap well? That's what that who shot you moment is. Because you can hear, Mike, you can see him and hear him refusing to leave, lose his breath. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Mike, where you dig in as an MC and it's like, not this time, not on this verse, bodying these niggas. He yeah. embodied that live where he's like, no, I'm going to spit it out raw in one breath, in one take, hard, live, on some Rap shit. It's beautiful. I went nine because he's not KRS. He's not Kane. He's not Busta Rhymes. If we're being tough like we say we need to be, then I'm going to go with the nine on that. But that versus shit was special. But it, nine, was. Okay. it was. It was. Content, special. I went eight. I went eight, too. Intangibles, I went nine. Intangibles, I went eight. Okay. Because he Again, has- the, the, the verses kind of pushed me to that nine with intangibles mm. Mm. no 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 no. i think eight is solid uh hook game i went eight so did i versatility nine and i need I to change that yeah i gotta change that versatility based on what you said i i was going mostly on his collaborations which i think does add to versatility but he hasn't really shown us much versatility in his individual efforts. Right. When you ask him to jump on something like that, how about this? All that stuff Puff asked him to do is actually what served him most with his versatility. The Honey remix. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All that Are we going to go eight with that? Huh? Are we going to go eight with that? I mean, 
I'm going to go eight. It's hard to go any lower than that. Because we can't go lower because the records he contributed to have held exactly. up so well. Like, that Honey remix is dope. Yeah. All about the Benjamins, I don't think we need to talk about what that record is. That's one of the, for whatever people feel about that record or feel about that era, how about this? People thought Hate Me Now is the song of that record. All about the Benjamins is the song from that era. Oh, definitely. No I, question. I'm out Anybody that was outside at that time knows. 97 to 99? All About the Benjamins is the best rap song in that stretch. Donnell says, I'm from the boogie down, and he's revered for never having a bad verse. See? Goes a long way. Goes a long way. All right, man. We're like three-something hours in, man. Y'all enjoy the rest of your Friday, man. This was a great show, though. I think we covered a lot. What we need to do is we need to go ahead and share notes, and we're going to put this full chart out there, section for section. I think we should go 10 10, 10. I'll put the whole thing up, but we'll break it down where everybody can see everything. Okay, I think before we put the chart out, you and me need to go back and do some editing. Yeah. And, audit, and then put the list up for the people to let them edit and audit. And then we can come back on Wednesday again with like, boom, okay, here we go. Yeah. Because even when I'm looking at it right now, it's like, okay, so something like this. We got... We got Jay's content and subject matter at a nine. Okay? Do you really think it's a nine? When you weigh it in the whole of its totality. Because how many times has he gone in depth on his albums? Because he really didn't start going in depth with us. The first time I heard him go in depth, personally, was really on the dynasty on This Can't Be Life. Before right. That, but again, we, we can't act that, like... It's, the, the it's like when you... When you we can't act like 444 four, four didn't happen, though. No, no, right, 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 right. But are we going to give you extra points for doing what people like Nas and Have Star and KRS One do their whole career with regularity? I think, you that, I think one that's fair. You're right. right. I think that's so, fair. So we need to dig in on stuff like that. Somebody made a comment about how we took the ratings up, but only took Meth down a point when he should have been taken down a point and a half. He's like, well, if Meth's not a 15, when you moved him down, you should have moved him to 13.5 instead of 14. So is Meth a 13 as a lyricist? Or he's a 14. Because it's like I was telling you, Mike, meth content is not strong. It's a 7. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Meth songwriting skills is not strong. It's a 7. When you're listening to meth, you're actually listening for the lyrics, the voice, and the delivery. He's stronger as a lyricist than I think, so I would lean on 14 instead of 15. But these are things we need to audit. Because personally for me, I prefer Method Man lyrically to Jay-Z. Uh, okay. Like, if I, Mike, if you're asking me, like, how about this? What Method Man did? How about this? If Conway sends his verse to Jay for Lemon, we do not get the output that Method Man gets back on if Lemon. Method Man's a better rapper than Jay Z right now. Look, we can get in a whole no, conversation. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll go a step further because here I have proof of why this happens. I'll push it to <laughs> Pusha T sent Jay that drug deal as anonymous. That's not even one of Pusha's better verses in the last five years. And he smashed it. And Jay did a good job, but he didn't up the ante. Imagine if imagine Method Man delivery wise on that beat on drug dealers anonymous. Feel me? So it's no. like when you people be talking lyrically about Jay, it's like, no, he's at the bottom end of my sphere, right next to Meth. I, I disagree with you. Method Man was my favorite rapper growing up. But yeah, I know we're going to be on the phone for hours just kind of hashing right, right. this out. This is probably a two, three hour conversation. Me. Oh yeah, my God. Bro. All right, man. Y'all have a safe Friday. And uh, yeah, hit that thumbs up before y'all get up out of here. And if you hadn't subscribed to the Recording Hip Hop YouTube channel, subscribe now. Hit that um, bell icon oh, so you know when we're going live. Hold on, Mike. One more thing. Have you cut it off yet? No, nah, I ain't cut it off yet. Okay, so so many people been on the YouTube page. I'm Colin Damar, Colin underscore Damar. When the person Colin Damar be on there and you be like, I don't know who this is, that's Coop. My name is Armad Colin Damar Cooper. My middle names are Colin Damar. That was my writing handle that I was writing under before this podcast popped up during this pandemic and everybody saw my face. Or you can just pull up on me on Twitter, Coop underscore A2HH for according to hip hop because the YouTube comments are starting to get off the chain and I don't always have time. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we're going to holler at y'all and follow Coop, too. I need to put that at the bottom of the screen.